The following content is provided under a Creative Commons license. Your support will help MIT OpenCourseWare continue to offer high-quality educational resources for free. To make a donation or view additional materials from hundreds of MIT courses, visit MIT OpenCourseWare at ocw.mit.edu. Three strings, three trash barrels, and three electrodes, each connected to the adjacent barrel. The drop deflections indicate that a large alternating voltage is building up spontaneously. We have an unusual form of a three-phase high-voltage generator. This explanation may occur to you with a little thought as we study now the interactions of electric fields and moving media. The moving medium is ordinary water. We'll place the ring at one kilovolt in potential. At a short distance from the nozzle, the jets break into drops, which we see here in slow motion. The water jets are grounded. And so charges on the ring induce image charges on the jets. As the drops pull away from the stream, they do so with a net charge. This charge is then transported to the pail, where it adds to the charge from the preceding drops. This sphere attached to a conductor can give an idea of the electric field intensity. About 30 kilovolts per centimeter is required to produce breakdown in air. So we generate about 10 kilovolts, beginning with charges induced by two 510 volt batteries we have a voltage generator. The relaxation time in tap water is far less than a microsecond. This gives plenty of time for charge to accumulate on the drop as it forms. For the free drop, the relaxation time of the air is much greater than a second. Enough time for the drop to reach the pail with its charge. The electric Reynolds number, based on the properties of the air, the distance of travel, and the drop velocity, is large. In a high voltage Van de Graaff generator, the falling drops are replaced by a moving insulating belt. Charges are placed on the belt by a corona source at the bottom. They are removed at the top, where they accumulate on the dome. This small Van de Graaff generator can make 500,000 volts. Large, modern electrostatic machines produce as high as 10 million volts. So far, we've considered the effects of material motion on the electric field. This experiment emphasizes what we've learned. You'll want to explain it yourself. We placed a second stream of drops next to the one we were using a moment ago. 
This stream also has its inducer electrode and a pail for catching the drops. Now, however, there is no external source of voltage on either inducer ring. Rather, the rings are connected to the pails of the opposite streams, which causes them to charge spontaneously. The electrical breakdown makes it clear that with no excitation, this system generates about 20 kilovolts. Kelvin's water drop experiment demonstrates for us that not only does the motion generate the electric field, but that the field also has a strong influence on the motions. If we bear in mind that the major constituents of this experiment, air, water drops, and electric charges, are also in the atmosphere, it's not difficult to imagine that the drop dynamics have a lot to do with lightning. Like our experiment, thunderstorms are an electrohydrodynamic dynamo, of course, a much more complicated one than we have here. Lord Kelvin's dynamo took yet another form in our introduction. Three streams, with each inducer electrode attached to the barrel of a neighbor. The alternating streams show that the fields are spontaneously building up. This time, the voltage of each pail increases in an oscillatory fashion. The arrangement of electrodes, water, and air is a three-phase AC dynamo.